Hey, this is Brent Jensen. You're listening to No Sleep Till Sudbury, the show where we talk about the music that makes your skin vibrate. And joining me today is an incredible R&B singer. Her name is Sandra Boza. Sandra, thank you for coming in. Thanks for having me. I appreciate you coming in. So, Sandra, you are, are a Toronto native, um, but you've lived in a lot of different places. So you spent a lot of time in Spain when you were a kid. Um, I would go for it. I think first time we went, I was about three. Mm-hmm. And we would go every other year for good chunk of time four or five months i think my mom was a teacher she was a supply teacher at our school so she would take all of our homework and just homeschool us mm. for a few months up in the mountains and the story about how you learned piano is fascinating to me so you learned how to play the piano this is great from a hand-drawn picture of a piano on a piece of paper that's how you learned how to play the piano yes i, I distinctly remember um our piano teacher showing us how to draw a keyboard and I always just kind of assumed it was because we couldn't afford a piano. You know, we grew up at Lake Finch and Weston, not with a lot. My father worked very hard. Now, I was talking to my sister about it, and she said, no, our mother just didn't didn't want to invest in a piano until she knew that we were <laughs> serious about it. So, yeah, we finally got a Casio keyboard, I think maybe a few months in or a year into. Yeah. I can't remember how far into piano. When you were 10, I read, and then you were, yeah. you, you were ready to play. Yeah. Because yeah. that's crazy. We had been playing. My sister and I used to do performances in the backyard for our neighbors that's great we would we were both she was a musical theater nerd mm-hmm. i had elements of that but we listened to oldies my mom would force us to listen to 1050 chum oh nice i didn't know there was actually other music i didn't know there was modern music until i, I got to school and other kids started talking about this group called new kids on the block and i was so confused uh, but we would sing like we would sit in the roof and sing the entire phantom of the opera from the beginning to the end oh wow <laughs> yeah wow we were big nerds <laughs> So you've got uh, a new single out, Stone Junction. Is the is that the newest or is that the... That's the second one. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, what is the other one? The first one is called Almost Love. Ah, that right. That was out, I think, I think I released it in October. Okay. I think Stone Junction came out in November. Yes. Right? Yeah, I think so. Okay. And you have a new record coming out in February. I do, yes. Good. It's called What's Falling called? Away From Me. Falling Away From Me. Cool. We were talking earlier about branding and genres and that sort of thing and when i heard your music not so much how it sounds but the vibe that you give off you give off a very distinct for me anyway janice joplin vibe yeah, i love janice joplin it comes through yeah it I, really does I connect oh i'm so glad to hear that because I, I don't know if it's necessarily something i'm going for because i just um well, i just want to make my music and i think that i, I wouldn't want to try to do because i've heard people try to do janice joplin and only Janis Joplin can do Janis Joplin. Mm-hmm. And I don't I don't want to be Janis Joplin. I want to be influenced and be an admirer of Janis Joplin. But I want to do me, you know, and leave her her. Yeah. Yeah, because she was too phenomenal, you know. I, I think she was – there's certain artists, I think, that are too magical for this world, you know. Mm. Mm. I think Amy Winehouse and Janis Joplin, two of the artists I connect to most deeply, I think, are two of those artists. I like that. So that's a good segue into your first tune. You brought your guitar with you. So you're going to play one now. You play one at the end of the show. So you're now going to play. This is called, it's very new, but I think it's called Keep the Faith. Keep the Faith. I think it's called. <laughs> we don't know yet. I wrote it in Picton, uh, sitting beside a lake. So you'll hear the water imagery. Awesome. All right. Take it away. All the love you give me I can't quite believe All the things you tell me I whisper to the sea Come 
rush into my door I take them deep inside of me and as the water watches for the war I see your secrets in the trees Ooh. I'm trying hard, honey There's a lifetime of fantasy Blocking my way Just keep the fantasy Honey and I, I promise I will, I will believe. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. Sure, I know that no one that knows me is gonna know me anymore. Oh, and as the sun breaks, I promise that the change will echo in the hearts of anyone I've ever named. I, I, and I will believe, I will believe, I will believe, I will believe. Just keep the faith, baby, and I swear I'm. Trying hard, honey, yeah. Just keep the faith, baby. I'm trying hard, yeah. All the love you give me, I can't quite believe. And I'm trying hard, honey Just keep the faith Just keep the faith And I will And I will And I will believe I will believe I will believe Wow. <laughs> that was fantastic. Thank you very much. That was really, really great. You have a tremendous voice. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well done. So keep the faith. We think so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we'll talk about your gigs really quick. So you have a gig tonight at the I Old do, Nick on yeah. the Danforth in Toronto. And you are at Hughes Room on January 18th. That is a, I'm doing a fundraiser. Or sorry, not a fundraiser. Fundraiser's tonight. Okay. <laughs> I'm doing a... James Taylor tribute at mm -hmm. Hughes Room. Okay, yeah. cool. Whoa, that's good. Yeah. What yeah, do you plan? Yeah. I don't know yet. I have to pick. I've been listening to James Taylor a lot lately. Yeah. But I have to pick. I'm not even sure how many songs oh. <laughs> actually. But yeah, I, ha I haven't decided. Wow. It's okay. hard to pick, you know. Uh, and then you're at the Cameron House on February 15th. Yes, that's my album release. Oh, very cool. Yeah. It's going to be great. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. Okay. So- your first tune, you've got a great list here. Your first tune is Buffalo Springfield and For What It's Worth. This is, um, my mom is a folky, so I okay. was raised on those oldies. But See, the Joplin thing, it's so yeah. clear. Well, it's funny because I was raised on, I, like I, didn't, I discovered Joplin on my own. I was okay. raised on Neil Young, Joni Mitchell, Mamas and the Papas, oh. and anything that was played on 1050 Chum. That's great. Uh, my mom would quiz us if uh, a song would come on the radio. And my mom would say, who is this? What band? What year? You know, like the Beatles. It was, That's great. It was so funny. She would quiz us. I love that. How old were you? Oh, I don't even think from birth. <laughs> <laughs> my mom was the foundation of my musical education. She really went out of her way to make sure we had that in our lives. She took us to musicals, to concerts. Yeah. Like she, she forced me to take piano lessons. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, I didn't want to. Yeah. But I'm glad I did. But anyway, so Buffalo Springfield. 
that was, you know, like I discovered the rockier stuff of my own, but Buffalo Springfield and that kind of stuff was definitely my mom's thing. But that song in particular, you know, I always say, and you hear a lot of people say, like, I don't have a favorite song because mm-hmm. it's so hard. Oh, yeah. But I always say that this is actually my favorite song. And it's because of those two notes, the harmonics, you know? Yes. I yeah. think the entire essence of the song is in those two notes. Yeah. It's instantly recognizable. Yes. And yeah. it's just, it's such a phenomenal song. And it's so, and I still, I play that all the time. And I get lost in that when I play that song because I think it's so relevant mm-hmm. still. And David Crosby was, you know, he, he wrote a book called Stand and Be Counted. Okay. He has a song called Stand and Be Counted, too. It was on, I think, the CSNY 2K album, maybe? Mm. Or, or Looking Back? I can't remember what album, but it's a song about activism. And his book is a, it's a book about musicians in activism. Really? And so, I mean, they were always such a political group. Yeah. And if you, what I really wanted to put on that list, and again, I, I forgot because there were so many songs swirling in my head, but there's a live version that Stephen Stills plays of For What It's Worth. Yep. And I think he mixes it with 49 Bye Byes. Oh, is that on Four Way Street? Yes. Yes. And that just like I, I actually I don't know why I didn't put it on your list. I just I almost break down in tears when I listen to that. Just yeah. the first of all, the melody when it starts off with forty nine reasons all of them lies. Like, yeah. Gorgeous melody. That's and an him incredible on piano, record. Yeah. And then when he goes into for what it's worth and he does that whole political rant, like oh god, my head just explodes. What yes. an incredible musician and man and sentiment and yeah that neil young medley on that same record is really good too yes yes i've completely see i knew this would happen i started talking about other songs when you asked me about one song you're cheating yeah sorry (laughs) i hadn't thought of it that way but that's a a good a lot of people do that so so it's true though so i limit it to five then they end up talking about like 17 different songs (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but yeah, but that song, you know, this is kind of, that was the foundation of all those emotions that come up in those other songs was this song. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I think it's so poignant. Like, and sometimes I think, you know, there's, I'm, so, I'm a bit of a conspiracy theorist. And I think when people come together to activism, that's when change happens. And right mm-hmm. now we, we really are encouraging a society of individualism. Mm. You know, everybody's on their phones. Everybody's focused on themselves. It's yeah. very me, 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 me. And, you know, activism, like there's. There's not as much of it. I mean, it's still out there. There's still movements. There's still people who are willing to contribute. But I think there's personally like a direct, intentional um, encouragement away from unification. Absolutely. I completely agree. And it's, that's a bit sad. We talk about that a lot on this show. Um, and with this song in particular, I'm thinking about Laurel Canyon. Yeah. And all the great music that came out of there around the late 60s. What a great place to have been. Oh. Incredible. You ever hear um, the association a song called Never My Love? No. Yeah, I think you'd really like it. After the show, I'll, I'll put it in your phone or whatever. You'd really, it's just one of those classic tunes from that time. There's a great movie out right now, actually. Bob Dylan's son, Jacob, if you remember him from The Wallflowers. Yeah, great band. So he uh, organized this thing. It's called Echo from Laurel Canyon. And it's just a, it's kind of a, a look back on all the great music that came out of there with Crosby and Stills and and they're actually in the documentary and the association and whoever else was Neil Young is in it too so it's just really cool you'd actually really like that too yeah so I'm gonna send you home with some good stuff today yeah I love love that whole I mean Neil I've seen Neil Young seven times in concert oh wow huge Neil Young (laughs) that's great yeah nice Massey Hall uh no I didn't see him at Massey Hall uh I saw him where I saw him at I saw CSNY a few mm. times. At the really? At the Center. Yeah. Wow, nice. And I saw Neil Young on his own, I think at the Air Canada Center too, and a few other places. I think I saw him with Crazy Horse maybe. Mm, wow. That's when I was in high school. In high school, I used to save my money for concerts mm-hmm. that nobody my age would go to. I went with my mom. <laughs> I went to a lot of concerts with my mom. <laughs> oh, really? I saw Deep Purple. Nice. Joe Cocker. Cool. The Who, Guess Who. I saw some great acts. Wow. Skinner. Those are some good shows. Unfortunately, Ted Nugent. Ted Nugent. Was he wearing a loincloth? I don't know. I tried to block that part of it. He was playing with Skinner. <laughs> but, yeah. I saw him open up for somebody and he had the loincloth. He, sw- he swung out like on a vine or whatever he does. And he shot like this flaming arrow. Like I saw him like shoot the, the arrow. <laughs> Sacrifice the buffalo, I think it was. Yeah. yeah. Terrible Ted. <laughs> All right, let's go to your next dude, Amy Winehouse, and what is it about men? So this one I love. It's funny. It's not my favorite Amy Winehouse song. I mean, it's one of my favorites, of course, but the reason I chose it is because it's a song that, you know, 
gives me goosebumps. So it makes your skin me, vibrate. Makes my skin vibrate because yeah. she wrote that, I think it was on her first album, Frank. Mm -hmm. And so she wrote that when she was like 17 or 18, I think. Mm. And the lyrics in it, like I think she was painfully self-aware. Oh, yeah. Because she, the one of the lyrics in that song is, my self-destructive side grows a mile wide. What is it about men? Mm. And she was writing about her codependence before she, just like, actually, I'm going to do cheat again just like Alanis Morissette some of the songs in Jagged mm. Little Pill yeah we're so phenomenally aware of codependence and writing these lyrics that define codependence before I'm sure either of them knew what codependence was right and Amy Winehouse writes these lyrics I mean and, and she's just she's just writing how she feels and she's so raw and I love raw artists like I love Lucinda Williams too she's another one yes raw like I love raw artists that's why I'm less prone to I think there's a lot of great pop music, but I'm less drawn to pop music because it's a little more polished. That's mm -hmm. the nature of pop always has been. Yeah. But I love raw artists that just kind of spit out what they're feeling, what they're thinking. And sometimes they don't even know. Yeah. And I mean, myself included, I think I wrote lyrics when I was 19 or 20 and didn't know what they were about. And then years later, I realized what I was writing about, mm. you know, and I'm sure that'll happen years from now yeah. about songs that, you know, that song I just played, I wrote a few months ago. Yeah. But. I think it's fascinating. It's it's this like um, conduit that's open. Absolutely. And everybody has it inside of them, but certain artists are able to open it or access it. Mm -hmm. You know, not just artists, but people who you know have a conduit open, and you always know them. You you can identify that conduit. Oh yeah. Even if you don't really know what it is. Yeah. You know that person who has just a, a certain openness or a thing that emerges from them that's unique. I think it all comes from the same place. You're right. Erica Badu, window seats next. So I used to travel a lot. Uh, I worked in Morocco okay. and in Senegal for a little bit. And so I was always flying somewhere. And then I go to Spain and visit my family, you know. So every time I would get on the plane, it was a tradition for me to put on window seat and listen to it. Okay. Um, it's, well, just because it's such a dope song, but like the lyrics too. Like I just, you know, have you ever had that feeling? You just want a window seat. You don't want anybody next to you. I mean, that's the always. lyrics. Like. You just want to window seat. You want to look out the window, but specifically when you're like in that place, that emotional place where yeah. you just don't want to be talked to, touched. You don't want anybody talking to you. Mm -hmm. And so I just, I, again, like somebody who could take an emotion that's so frequent and common. Like there's so many artists who could do that. I think it's amazing. Yeah. But every time I would get on a plane, just it was just a point of tradition that I'd sit down and listen to window seat at least once, if not several times. <laughs> I used to do that. There's songs that I love. I will listen to them on repeat for hours sometimes. For hours? Maybe crazy, yeah. Really, I. Eh? There's a couple songs that hit that spot. Acid Tongue by Jenny Lewis. Yeah. Camisa Negra by Juanes. Wow. No it, idea. It, yeah, that one's like, in the Spanish world, that's a super poppy, popular pop song, but it's great. It's so okay. catchy. Um, but yeah, that's the window seat. I would listen to it like on repeat for a I do that. I do that sometimes. Yeah. Like there's really great songs that you come across that you just have a, I just have this deep appreciation for and I just want to hear them over and over again. You know what one of those songs is? And this is almost a guilty pleasure, but I don't mind telling you. It's uh, To Sir With Love. I love but that song. That is probably one of the oh. best written songs yeah. in the history of written songs. It's don't you so, think? It's so much fun. I used yeah. to play that all the time with the guy that I played with in Morocco. He's you from played Brooklyn. that? Yeah. You would sing that? Yeah. I would pay to hear that. Oh, I love that. Oh, man. I should let Kevin know you'll pay. <laughs> no. Seriously. Do, do you know why it's great, though, Those Sandra? Cool days. Oh, I love that song. Because her voice is so, like, she goes tone, semi tone. Like, it's just perfect. It's just so airy and yeah. beautiful. As she does, like, it's like just Lulu? awesome. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's another, that's one that I just, I grew up with. Really? It was just, it, they played it on 1050 Show. Yeah. And then this guy that I worked with in Morocco, my favorite coworker, hands down. Yeah. No offense to any of my other coworkers overseas, but <laughs> he was just like, we met, he's from Brooklyn. Okay. Kevin D. Cummings. Okay. He was one of the writers on, do you know Funking for Jamaica? Yeah. He was one of the writers on, if you look up the music video to Funkin' for Jamaica, you will see Kevin. He had a big fro. No way. His hair's all gone now. He hates that video. <laughs> <laughs> I like teasing him about it. Uh, but yeah, he's he's in it. I think he was one of the writers, but he was, yeah, he was. He was one of the writers. But that was his his first gig. Now he's 60. I shouldn't say that on air. Sorry, Kevin. <laughs> but he's he's older, but his first gig was like opening for Parliament Funkadelic. No. And then he toured with the Commodores. Like, oh, wow. Yeah. 
And Erica Badu still, like, she sampled that song, Fucking yeah. for Jamaica. That's how I heard about it the first time. Oh, no way. And then I ended up working with this guy. I remember we were jamming one night on stage, and I, I started singing it, and he looked at me funny. And I only found out a few days after that 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 was his song. Wow. But anyway, so when we got together, the first night we played together, it's like we've been playing for 20 years. We met at Soundcheck, because mm-hmm. he had been there for a few months with different singers, and then I showed up. And then we just, uh, I said, do you know this? Do you know this? Do you know this? And so I know all this old stuff because of my mom. Yeah. And so we were just, it was like musical heaven. Wow. Like, I think we rehearsed maybe once in the three years that we worked together, on and off for three years. But we did all that stuff, like, just, I mean, one of it was the other one that I love doing. I think it's, who was it? Um, That Love and Feeling. Yeah, you've lost that love you and feeling. Lost that love and feel. Yeah, yeah. I love doing that one with him, like yeah. that kind of stuff. That was just our jam, you know. Wow, and wow. Then we'd, we do new songs that people requested of us, but like, yeah, to serve with love, love child is another fun one. Yes. Yeah, I love those songs. You know, I actually love doing cover gigs. Yeah. Because I like one. I was doing a gig. Sorry, stop me if I'm taking up too much time because <laughs> I do this. But uh, one time, I a couple months ago, I was hired by the. I get hired by the city of Toronto for gigs occasionally, for just different events. Okay. And I was doing a gig. I think it was for like the Transit Commission or something. I don't know. From all over the world. Okay. And I was, so we were just kind of background music, you know, we're just sitting there playing and uh, we were supposed to play for 45 minutes or something. Mm. And I I called the sound guy over and I said, can you ask them if it's okay if we play a little longer? Just because I was having so much fun. Yeah. Because sometimes the sound is good. Yeah. And the space is good and your mood is good. And the vibe's good. And I'm singing like Aretha Franklin and Etta James and like, you know, the Isley Brothers and like the coolest stuff. Nice. And I just wanted to, you know, keep doing it. So. I'm sure people were into it too. Yeah. Well, the, the actually the event planner came over shortly after and asked if we could sing longer. I said, yeah, perfect. That's great. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's such a joy to just be able to do that. Yes, definitely. Uh, Neil Young is next with Old Man. Great okay. Song. So this song. Okay. This song is very important to me. Uh, you know, you just hear a song. There's there's several moments in your life that are just moments you remember that are kind of defining moments in your Absolutely. life. Absolutely. First time I heard Old Man, my mom had it on this cassette tape and it had a bunch of, it, had a, it was a random, do you remember mixtapes, right? Of course. My mom had this weird mixtape that had Old Man, Heart of Gold, the Electric Boogie Band, oh. Total Eclipse of the Heart, <sighs> wow. uh, James, John Denver, Okay. and like a bunch of other things. Wow. Oh, and the other one was... a. Uh, uh, mix bunny what was it what was mix, bonnie tyler doing mix, on there sir sir mix no not sir mix sir bunny <laughs> you know the bunny the oh right yeah jazz mixer master mixers yeah <laughs> that's it so basically it was Jive like a, bunny and the master mixers that's it that's yeah. it so it was a weird cassette tape but i remember old man came on and it yeah. stopped me dead in my tracks and i felt changed it's maybe over dramatic what grabbed you about that song? Because it's so simple. I know. Well, that, that's, that's was that just, what it was? Well, this is what I love about Neil Young. And, you know, you, there's a lot of artists, and I'm not going to name any names because they're all great artists, but there's some artists that I listen to and they're great. There's so much going on and there's so much production and so much, you know, musical choreography and, and composition. And mm-hmm. um, it's great. Don't get me wrong. They create this, like, wall of sound. But that, for me, personally, everybody's different is nothing on somebody who can take three chords and lyrics and a melody and create an atmosphere that stops you in your tracks and just yeah. grabs you. Yeah. Like Craig Cardiff is like that. I saw Craig Cardiff in Vancouver. I used to live in Vancouver and we used to go to the railway club all the time. Yeah. I played there like often on Wednesday nights with Super Robertson. He had a show every week for like, I think almost 20 years. And one night Craig Cardiff was coming on after. And so I stuck around and listened and like he had an entire room silent jammed people were sitting on the floor two nights in a row wow and it was just him and a guitar and it's because he had this voice that just like stopped you Mm -hmm. and it's just him and a guitar and i just think neil young was the same when i first heard that song old man i I mean and apart from the fact that the lyrics are just like so everybody can relate to that yes everybody you know and i mean i think i'm gonna go maybe too deep here but i think um that's impossible (laughs) i think like i think that's what we're lacking is looking at people like we kind of with reality TV and social media, we are creating really mean people. Mm. Like I think you know a comedian who I will not mention because he's not an admirable person, but he said something that actually resonated. He said, "Um, you know, when you were a kid and you said something mean to another kid in the schoolyard and you saw that hurt, 
And I've mm-hmm. done it because every, every kid stretches and reaches and tries yeah. tries to bully if they feel bullied, you know, but it's it's the reaction that kind of shapes you in some cases, you know, some if you're a sociopath, they won't bother you. But, mm-hmm. you know, if you say something mean and the reaction and the emotional response from that other person's face, that is how we that's how humans grow, I think, from other humans mm-hmm. having reactions and emotions and like emotional growth based on other people bouncing off of other people. You know, you can't grow alone. I truly believe that. And with social media and like you write something, you type something on somebody's profile picture, you're not going to get an emotional response because that person person is going to have that emotional response on their own, sitting at home in front of their screen. Mm -hmm. And so I think we are lacking some very important growth right now. And I think Neil Young, like writing that song about like old man, take a look at my life. I'm a lot like you. Like I could be sorry, Neil, if this is completely not what you're saying, but like looking at an older person and just seeing yourself in them because we're all going to be that person someday, you know, um, God willing. But I think there's a lot of cruelty and there always has been, but I think it's become worse than ever now because we can't look at each other and think like, I'm just like you. Yeah. It's a lot more visible and it's a lot more amplified now because people have the power of anonymity. Yes. It's frightening. It's really frightening. Some of the things I hear people say, comment section. There's, I can't remember her name, but there's this musician who took the comments in her comment section and wrote a song. And it's a great song, but it's an awful song. Okay. Because it's just all these things that people have said to her, especially as oh. a woman, people commenting on her physical appearance, on her makeup, her lack of makeup. Uh, she's too skinny. She's too fat. She's too ugly. She can't sing. She's like everything that people feel they have the right to say to you is awful. And I'm sure I've done it too, you know, and like, I'm not perfect. Like you just get mad. You want to say something, mm. but it's, it's just, it's becoming a, a condition. Yeah, it is. You're right. It's, you know, I've, I've often said before, 75% of the internet is a toilet for that reason, just because people have that opportunity, you know, to be anonymous and it's, it's awful. People take awful liberties with it. It's like a training to be free of empathy. Mm. Yeah, it's like a training ground for sociopaths. It's true, actually. The internet is a training ground for sociopaths. You're I always right. say if it wasn't for my music career, I would I would have a party and I would delete every social media account and I would throw my phone in the lake. Mm. Janis Joplin would have done that too. <laughs> All right, Radiohead, Electioneering is okay, your last this- tune. <laughs> such a cool song it is good this is this i put this on is more comical than anything because this is the first song that i had where i envisioned myself on stage playing guitar and rocking out oh wow really huh? <laughs> yeah when did so, this come out like 97 this is okay computer i think, I think. 97 yeah 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 okay. it's i think this is one of the coolest albums and this is a one of my family like relatives friends of the family she's mm-hmm. like a relative uh, linda catardo she's one of, she comes to all my gigs. She's like, she's a friend of my mom's. Okay. And she's just the coolest lady. And I remember for whatever reason, I had heard Radiohead. I'd heard a song. I don't know what, I wasn't a huge fan. I, I didn't know who they were. I was young. I was, was in grade school. But I remember Linda said, what do you want for Christmas? And I just said, I want a Radiohead album. It's called a OK Computer. So she bought it for me. And I remember just like, again, it was that thing. And I I put it in my CD player and I press play. I had this beanbag chair. I would listen. I would sit in my blue beanbag chair and listen to new CDs. That was my listening spot. Okay. Where I sat in my blue beanbag chair and I press play. And I remember it started and I was just like transported. And OK, or electioneering came on and I just, I got goosebumps because it was just such a, like for lack of a better description, it was just such a rocking tune. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I did. I kept like envisioning my, my best friend, you know, we, we, she played guitar too. And we always talked about starting a band and we never did. But I envisioned us both on stage just rocking. And we were big nerds. I was a big nerd anyways. She was slightly cooler. I envisioned like, you know, being a, <laughs> a nerd transformed into like a super cool rocker chick. And everybody in my high school would think I was this cool person. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I had that vision for a while. But it's still one of my favorite albums. Now you are that person. Yeah. Hopefully soon like you are those those are those are great segue into your next song (laughs) thank you isn't it yeah i think it is a good segue. did you rehearse that (laughs) i didn't i didn't i'm kidding but it works right (laughs) it does work yeah so you imagine that you could be this super cool rocker chick and now you are a super cool musician with a a fantastic voice and you're gonna play another tune i will i will play another tune i also wanted to point out my guitar is called jj JJ. Its name is JJ after Janice Joplin. 
Okay. Oh, yeah. Interesting. I like that. This is a also relatively new song. Um, to Sir With Love? <laughs> I wish you could play that. So do I. I love that song. <laughs> okay, next time you're playing it. I could sing an acapella. For real? If I get the lyrics out, I could sing an acapella. Yeah, <sighs> for sure. Do you want me to do that? Yes. Instead of this song? No. <laughs> no, do what you want. I'm, I'm being an idiot. Do I could, I'd love to, actually. I'd it's, love to sing an acapella. Uh, the, my favorite part of that song, well, I mean the, the melody and, and the rest of it and the songwriting, but her voice is just like perfectly suited to that song because it just floats well she's also got sort of a i mean her whole branding was sort of like a schoolgirl, you know kind of thing. yeah exactly like, which is kind of weird which suits actually it. The, it is a little weird but that's, well, that's like, another conversation altogether yeah <laughs> um yeah it just suits the song you know it does for yeah, sure well there's a movie to serve with love right i with think Sydney so Boitier? oh yeah was it, was it called to serve with love i think so yeah I think you're, and yeah. she was in it yeah lulu i believe Oh, see, I don't Wasn't know. She... I don't know. I'm learning stuff here. I don't know. I could, well, I could be totally wrong. Mm. <laughs> but I believe that she was in it, and then she sings the song at the end. Mm. I think. I have no idea. We'll look it up. All right. Yeah, I'd love to sing that cappella if you want to like extend your podcast, because I'd be thrilled. I love that song. Okay, let's do it then. We're okay. doing it. Instead of this. You can do whatever you want. Can I do both? Sure. All right. Because I love this song too. Do, yeah. Hey, man, I don't. I, I write songs and then I record them on my iPhone. Yeah. And then sometimes I forget about them. And I found this. And I thought, God, that's a cool song. So I started playing it. And now I play it at every gig. Play it. It's called Time for Me to Go. Okay. Tell me the truth, babe. Do I still make your blood boil? Tell me the truth, babe, would you still ring around the world for me now? Tell me the truth, babe, when's the last time that you scream my name? Tell me the truth, babe, is it more passion or just pain? I don't want to argue no more, I ain't got nothing left to fight for. I don't know how we got here, but it's time for me to go home. No more, I ain't got nothing, nothing left to fight for. I don't know how we got here, but it's time for me to go You come to me now slow, with your head down low. You say, honey, I got some. Some things on my mind Yeah, I'd like to find the time To set aside and maybe figure it out Let's have a conversation But I say I don't want to argue no more I ain't got nothing left to fight for I don't know how we got here But it's time for me to go Yeah, I don't want to argue no more But it's time for me to go I don't want to argue no more I got got nothing left to fight for I don't know how we got here But it's time for me Yes, it's time for me Yes, it's time for me
Yes. Thank you. Stunning. Thank you very much. Seriously, that was fantastic. Thank you. Well done. All right, you want to hear it to serve with love? Yes, give me one verse. Uh, okay. You know what? Do you have your phone? I got to Google the lyrics. It's been a long time. Okay. I got my phone right you here. You got it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Strong arm you into letting me do both. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure their listeners, my listeners will hear that. She's very pushy. No, she's not. I just love singing. Oh, here we go. All right. A special treat. A We're like going off the rails here with this. Hope it goes well. <laughs> <laughs> Those schoolgirl days of telling tales and biting nails are gone. But in my mind, I know. That they will still live on and on. But how do you thank someone who has taken you from crayons to perfume? It, it isn't easy, but I'll try. If you wanted the sky, I would write across the world in letters that would soar a thousand feet high to serve with love. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I can't even talk. God, I love that song. Oh, my God. <laughs> like... Super goosebumps. Oh, I'm glad. I love that song. I you don't know, even know what to say. That was incredible. Thank you. There's certain songs that I just love singing, and that's one of them. The other one is um from Greece. There's two songs from Greece, and I actually I hope nobody hates me when I say this because <laughs> I get a lot of bad responses, but I hate the movie Grease. Yeah. But there's some great music in it. Oh, and, uh, yeah. I helplessly hoping I love singing that, okay. and I love singing um Rizzo's song. Uh I don't know. Oh, shoot. What's, oh, what is Rizzo's song? I'm totally blanking on it. I know. Grease Lightning and Hopelessly Devoted to You. That's it. Rizzo sings it while she's like walking away after there's some rumors spread about her. Um, I'm totally blanking on it right now, but it's such a cool song. I don't know. Text me. Let me know. <laughs> <laughs> the listeners will. can figure it out. I was hoping it would pop Somebody's up. Somebody's shouting it into their phone Somebody, right now. yep, yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, because it's such a great tune. Oh, that was fantastic, man. Thank you. It really was. Yeah, that was a lot Thank of fun. Thank you for doing that acapella bit, honestly. That was like, Thank listeners, that me. was our gift. That was our Christmas gift to you. <laughs> Seriously. Well, we're, we, I sh we should say we're doing this on what, what's today's date? The 13th? Yeah. December 13th. Friday the 13th. The show will air in January, but Happy this New is, Year. Uh, you just, you made my month. That was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. I love singing it. It was great. And a great chat. Yes. That yeah. was a lot of fun. That went by so fast. It did. See? I told you. It was fun. You can come back anytime. Thank you. I'd love to. All right. Sandra Boza, ladies and gentlemen. This has been No Sleep Till Subbury with Brent Jensen. We'll see you next time. Take good care. Brent Jensen is the best selling author of No Sleep Till Subbury. Leftover people and all my favorite people are broken. All titles available in stores and on Amazon worldwide. 